Welcome back to this final video in our string manipulation module. In this video, we'll be looking at how we can make comparisons between strings when we want to do things like looking for particular patterns within strings. So first of all, we're going to highlight with a section on how not to compare strings. Um, so what we've seen to date is we use the equality operator of equals when we're trying to compare individual atoms. So we can't use that as simply when we have strings. And that's because they're a list of characters. So if we try and run this equality operation, we've got tin on the left hand side and the word two on the right, you'll see we get this length error. And the reason we get this length error is because when we use equality here, we must have the same number of characters on the right as we do on the left, or we must have a single atom on one side and a list on this the other side. So say, for example, if we had the same size on both sides, we'd see we could do that and we'd get um, a true or false for every single individual atom within that list. So we're showing that again here. We could have done something like A equals AB um, or then this here example, tin equals man is similar to this one here. So where the, the sizes are the same. Um, so those are all okay to do. So what do we do when we have two lists of different lengths that we want to compare? So that's when we use this like operator. And the like operator is how we do comparison with strings. So even though we do have the option here when our strings are the same length, um, we would always recommend when strings using like. Um, and one of the reasons for that is down to performance, which we're demonstrating with this chunk of code here. So we're just introducing here our backslash TS function, which is basically going to return our execution time and space used when running that function. So that's what this part is doing. Um, this here, colon 50,000 is basically running it 50,000 times just because um, if we just ran it once, we wouldn't be able to see um, any difference because KDB is so performant. So we're just running it lots of times in order to show that difference. So in the first example, here we're running um, this tin equals man and we're running all out in front and the reason we have to add all there is just because we obviously get three booleans returned whereas we want just one result returned so we're getting a zero b back and then in the second example we're using the match operator and then in the third one here we're using this new like operator so if we run that you'll see the first one here it took 16 milliseconds and the second two were identical in terms of time taken so you can see the performance is improved when we use like, um, because obviously we're matching the entire thing, whereas we've seen with this equals operator with strings of the same length, um, we get returned each individual atom. So it's checking every single element of the list one by one. Okay. So how do we use this like function? Um, so we've got a number of different ways. The first one we've just seen, when we want to compare strings with strings, we can do that. We can also compare strings with symbols, which we'll show in a minute. Um, and we can compare symbols with symbols, although when you're looking for an exact match, um, that wouldn't be as performant as just using the equals, for example. And we can also perform regex comparisons. So let's take a look at some of these. So let's say we know the beginning of our string that we want to find, but we don't know the end of it. So in this example here, we have a, this um, Y variable and we're assigning it to be a string of IBM.oq. And then we're gonna use the like operator here. And we're just doing two things again, just introducing and reminding you of the fact that we can use functional notation with our square brackets, or we can use infix notation, where our first parameter is Y which is our string to check. And then our second parameter is that expression that we're searching for. So this is our wildcard character, which is an asterisk. And let's see what happens when we run that. We see that has been found in that list. Um, so this here is multiple characters long. So it can be one up to many characters that you're looking for. And that will always return um, a true or false from like. And we do have the option to add the asterisk either to the end of the string and we can also add it to the front of the string. So if we put it out in front, we can see that also worked for us. So yeah, we've got our wildcard um, asterisks here. So we click on this link, we can find out um, lots more great documentation and examples all around regular expressions. So we won't be doing these in detail in this video, but definitely check out this page 
it's got some really nice examples. You'll see we just showed this here, asterisk one, which is matching any sequence of characters. Um, if we used question mark, that would only match a single character. So maybe we just want to look for one character. Um, and then if we use the square brackets, this will um, allow us to search for a list of different alternatives. So we'll, we'll show that as well here. So for example, I want to look for I something M and then I don't know what it ends with. It ends with many characters, but I know there's only one character in between the I and the M and that will work um, because my character was B up here, IBM. This is the other example when I want to have a, a, an option there of one or something else. So for example, here I'm um, searching for either t, lowercase or uppercase T and then hit IS. So you can put in as many characters as you want inside these square brackets and it will look for one or the other of those. So you can see that's true. And you can see by comparison, when I don't have the T or any character there, I'm getting a false there. So you must have this represents a character that you're looking for. And then we're showing that with some numeric values here. This is quite useful with numeric values because you can add this hyphen in between and it basically says any num number between zero and nine, which is super useful when you're maybe looking for um, numbers or, you know, even a phone number or something, you can um, write out the regex expression nicely here. So if we're looking for winners 2020, where W and then some list of um, characters in between, and then I've got the number two, zero, and then I've got another number, which is either one or two, and then I've got another number, which is some number between zero and nine. And we can see we get one return from that, which is true. Um, so we can add wildcards to the beginning and the end in the same statement. So you could have searched for something like this, um, but just worth noting, you can't add the wildcard to write the pattern as well. So something like this is not gonna work. So if you've got the, the asterisk at the beginning and in the middle twice and at the end. So we also have the option to compare strings against symbols. So in this example here, I've got my Y from before, which if we remember was IBM.OQ. And then I'm gonna cast that here to a symbol. So this is how I cast to a symbol at the back tick out in front and then the cast operator. And then I'm running like on this new variable Z um, and I'm checking, does that equal that? So you can see Z here is a symbol, but I'm actually able to, to do a match um, or I'm actually able to do a comparison operator um, on that. Okay, so try this exercise. So use the like function to find where all of the IDs contain the string JPM in this list. And once you're happy with that, um, you can come back and let's move on to the final section in this module, which is string searching and replacement. So we've got two new functions and two final functions to introduce in this section. First one is SS, which stands for string search. And the next one is SSOR, which stands for string search replace. So SS does what it sounds like it does. It searches the string for a particular character. So I've got this list, Toronto, Ontario, and I'm looking for the string or the substring ONT. So what gets returned from that? So I end up getting the indexes return. So I'll get where the, the string begins from. So you'll see here, this is my zero width index, one, two, three, then I've got O and T, and then I've got four, five, six, seven, eight. So you can see it's telling me where does that substring begin in my larger string. And again, I have the option here to pass in um, a symbol that where I'm looking for either or, and then also with my single wildcard here, I can do that either. So um, I'll be able to mix in my regex expressions basically. So this one here is looking for, yeah, T-O-R or T-A-R. Um, so you can see that first one is here at the zero with index and then the second one begins at the 10th index here. Okay, so try out that short exercise. And then we'll move on and look at string search replace, which is just the next level on from string search. So instead of returning the indexes, what this is doing is checking for that string and then it's going to replace that with a new string. So in this example here, it's the same as before. I've got Toronto, Ontario. 
And then instead of just having SS, I'm having SS or I'm passing it the string. It's got another parameter additionally to the last time. So yes, I'm searching for this string. And then this is my replacement here. So when I run this, you'll see that ONT has been replaced with X in the first occurrence. And then ONT here has been replaced with X again. And then again, we can mix in our regex expressions and wildcards. So for example, I could search for T something or, and then I want to change where that happens to upper. So you can see I've replaced T something or to upper. And then again here, I've converted that to uppercase. And um, so no, we, we're showing you can use obviously the square brackets and the question mark here, um, but you can't use the asterisk wildcard when you're matching with SS and SS or, just to be aware of that. Okay, so try these exercises out at the end, just testing on those final two functions. And that concludes this module. So we've covered a lot in this. We've covered our string manipulation, creating and printing strings. We looked at displaying output using the print operator and also our standard error and standard output. Then we looked at when we're cutting strings and creating them um, using VS SV, we looked at padding um, and looking at trimming our white space and then adding back our white space in. And then finally, we've covered how we can do comparison and use regex expressions with strings. Okay, so once you're happy with that, you can again navigate up to a level to our parent directory and you'll be able to find our corresponding quiz here with exercises for you to try and you'll be able to test everything you've learned in this section in more detail as well here. Okay so thank you for listening and hopefully I'll see you in another module very soon.